Welcome to this session on the prep and resistance in the roundtable discussion on the challenges of, of white prep in Europe. So I would like to focus slightly on the clinical aspects and general perspective as well. Uh, so if we talk about HIV and PrEP targets, uh, we have to remind ourselves the specific targets for Europe where we, we wish to have a few million of people uh, on PrEP and reduce uh, the incidence of HIV uh, by 75% from the 2010 uh, baseline, but there are several barriers to, uh, to implementation. And if we focus on the clinical barriers, you can have it divided from the um, perspective of the countries where you have PrEP unavailable and PrEP available. So uh, if you would look and review this slide, you can see that one thing is visibility, then there is a fear of resistance, which uh, actually is now less and less important. Uh, then the issues of adherence, transmission of STIs. So we have to think about these issues in the context of the uh, implementation of PrEP and barriers to it, if we would like to open this discussion. If we would like to look at the medical barriers uh, to the um, PrEP delivery, uh, on the one hand, uh, it's still being perceived as too much medicalized. So where you can uh, have PrEP only, uh, uh, whether you can have PrEP to be only available in one medical facility or you have to go to the medical facility. And actually, uh, there is still discussion on the engagement of the medical professionals. And now I think it's less and less important uh, because uh, we know that many people have shifted the ideas on PrEP and the medical. Uh, society is getting used to it, so these barriers are really being overcome. If we would like to open this discussion, we need to still think about the challenges, not only uh, for us medics to work in sometimes hostile environments, uh, especially in the Central and Eastern Europe, obviously cost and accessibility, availability across formal medical and more informal platforms, access to prescription and now COVID-19 epidemics, which has shifted our ideas very strongly. From our medical perspective, we need to balance between uh, immediate, immediacy and the need for rapid PrEP and the PrEP which needs to be initiated as soon as again feasible uh, for the patient to know that they will be protected very, very quickly and patient safety. So this is why these guidelines which we have are actually speaking about hepatitis B, and it's consistent across all the PrEP guidelines where you need to think about some, um, um, about some needs, uh, about some things which need to be done. On the HEMSEX, which is almost in many countries uh, very clearly, closely integrated with PrEP, we need to think about the uh, drug-drug interactions, increase of STIs, uh, adherence to PrEP, and uh, whether it will be Eden-based or continuous PrEP, uh, but we have to think that chemsex and the uh, recreational substance use uh, actually are uh, not interacting with none of the PrEP options uh, very strongly. Obviously, uh, these adverse effects which people worry about are related to bone and renal issues. And now with the new uh, PrEP options, it will be more open. So I think the discussion can be also rounded around uh, implementation of staff-based PrEP in Europe and the cost which will be uh, of issue, especially in, for us in the Central and Eastern Europe. And also, we have to think about now, because the epidemics uh, of COVID-19 will be uh, here for significant periods of time, and we have to deal with these reductions of uh, testing services, provisions of condoms, lubricants, counseling. So I think PrEP now medically can be actually very strongly moved to the online PrEP, online consults, 
uh, also um, online platforms. So we have to respond to the COVID-19 epidemics uh, and the issues related to, with them. And also, PrEP is opening the STI risk issue uh, discussion, and this discussion is open for all the time, but please remember that for many countries, uh, PrEP uh, use and PrEP implementation medically uh, on one hand increases the risk of STIs, but on the other hand, this risk is balanced with a systematic diagnostic and screening towards the STI. And just to uh, show you this example, this is uh, the underdiagnosis of gonorrhea in Europe, where majority of diagnoses are being done in the West. In the center, it's actually uh, quite heavy that there is no gonorrhea, which is not true. There are no dedicated programs, and PrEP uh, can medically help with that. And obviously we have some challenges with chronic hepatitis B and PrEP, lower GFR, aging population, uh, lack of functional kidneys, pregnancies uh, where the partners are on PrEP. So we deal with these cases on the daily basis, but I would like to open this discussion for everyone on PrEP and future of PrEP from the context of the resistance. 